Good evening, everyone. Happy total solar eclipse. I had a fantastic day. I uh, lifted weights and then I actually went to the beach and got to see dolphins swimming. It was pretty magical. So what I wanted to bring up tonight was something that I didn't notice anybody mentioning because there was a lot of conjecture, a lot of predictions, a lot of deep dives into this eclipse, right? But what I found interesting, I did not hear anybody mention, so I was like, I need to mention this. So today, I actually made a post discussing it, and what I posted was uh, X marks the spot, and um, Maconda is in between Giant City State Park and Illinois' only national forest. So it's been said that on average, a total solar eclipse can be seen from the same place only once every 375 years. The two paths of the eclipses cross each other and create a zone of overlapping totality, which was around 9,000 square miles. So for the 2017 and the 2024 eclipses, X marks the spot over Cedar Lake in Jackson County, Illinois, the closest town to this exact astronomical treasure map spot is Maconda. The population's around 500. But for me, what surrounds Maconda was significant. Like to the left of Maconda is Shawnee National Forest and Right a little bit to the right is a giant city state park. And what's inside giant city state park is a prehistoric stone fort. And it's one of 10 similar sites in Southern Illinois that's situated atop a sloped ridge. So initially, of course, they thought it to be military fortifications. Archaeological consensus now suggests they served as a meeting place as meeting places or ceremonial locations. So I wanted to look and dive deeper into these areas. So let's get a feel. Let's go to Google Earth. I found this interesting, too, where it says Maconda is a village in Jackson County, Illinois. And how... In the early 20th century, it used the slogan Star of Egypt. But if you look closer, so there, here's Maconda right here. And so right here is Giant City State Park. So wait, let me zoom out so you could see. Here is Maconda so you get a feel. Shawnee National Forest is right here. And Giant City State Park is in this area. So looking into um, looking into these areas, I found some interesting stuff. So here are some photos. 
this is Giant City State Park. They're saying that the rock formations were forged like around 12,000 years ago. But look at them. It's beautiful. That's interesting. So Giant City Stone Fort site is currently an abandoned pile of rocks that used to be a stone enclosure that was built around 600 900 AD. And this is and there's around about 10 of these old structures in the area. And the prehistoric fort was constructed on a raised mass of land known as a promontory, while some others were built on hilltops. But look at those. Look at that. <gasps> that looks way older. <laughs> Let's see what it says. Built long before any modern people resided here, the original wall was dismantled by European settlers who needed the material in order to build their own structures. It was reconstructed in 1934 by the Civilian Conservation Corps, but has since fallen into ruin again. So it's listed on the National Register of Historic Places and can be accessed from dawn until dusk. Okay, so also looking into... Garden of the Gods, not to be confused with the Garden of the Gods in Colorado. That is a different spot, which is oh, like unbelievable. I really want to go to Garden of the Gods. This, look at that. <sighs> okay, so. A little bit of paradise in the Garden of the Gods, Illinois. So this was the other, this was the only national forest um, in Illinois. And it's nestled in between two major U.S. waterways. It's 280,000 acres of federally managed lands that spread out across nine counties. It's called the land between the rivers. Within the vast acreage are seven designated wilderness areas that are protected and managed to preserve the national conditions of the environment. I've never heard about this place in Illinois. I've never heard anybody talk about it. The fact that it's in the zone of totality to me is very significant and I want to know more. So if anybody knows any more information on this, I wanted to, I want to know more. Especially, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like it's much older and I feel like it is beautiful. There's huge 50 foot, 55 foot wide limestone caves, cave that was formed thousands of years ago. Oh, that's Cave and Rock State Park. The cave is an interesting site and is easy to visit since it is not very deep. Local legends say that in the early 1800s, the cave became a hideout for many river pirates and gangs of outlaws that roamed the region, including the infamous Jesse James, who preyed on the river commerce heading to markets as far south as New Orleans. What? What is that? Look at the shape of that. That's Cave in Rock State Park. This is looking across the Ohio River from inside the cave in rock. So it's been the backdrop for Hollywood. In 1956, 
Disney film Davy Crockett and the River Pirates here. And in 1962, John Ford used the cave for a scene in his Wild West epic movie, How the West Was Won. The nearby cave in Rock Kaler's restaurant proudly displays photos from the cast of the Disney film. Huh. There's a local Amish community. There's some painted bikes. Now, this Illinois iron furnace, this restored example of the iron furnace used in the area during the 1800s provided a glimpse into what was once a thriving industry in this part of the state. There are informative displays that describe the history and the process for making pig iron from the naturally occurring local resources. There is also a visitor information center and a picnic area of the site. Fluorite or fluorospar is the state mineral of Illinois. The geology that has made this part of the state so scenic has also been ideal for the formation of fluorite, which is the mineral name given to the chemical calcium fluoride. Hmm. I like how it's like light purple. It can crystallize in a variety of colors that include shades of purple, blue, green, yellow, pink, and white. Local American Indians use the mineral for jewelry and ceremonial carvings. In the 1870s, it was discovered that fluorospar which is the industrial name for fluorite, was used in removing impurities during the steel production process. This created a fluorite mining boom in the region of southern Illinois. Hmm. Fluorite is the primary source of fluorine, which has many com commercial uses. Uh-oh, included in its fluoride treatment in drinking water. That's not good. While fluorite is no longer mined in the United States, the American Fluorite Museum remembers the important era of local history. Located in the former office building of the Rosa Claire Lead and Fluoride Mining Company, this interesting little museum was a treasure trove of colorful mineral samples and various mining paraphernalia. Interesting. Okay. Well... I really thought that this area needs to be looked into and its location. And I wanted to let everybody know. So if they come up with anything or if they find anything, I wanted you to let me know. So Maconda, Illinois, if you want to look it up. So, Giant City State Park and Shawnee National Forest. Now, um, what? Yeah, let's go. Um, so, something I wanted to mention as well. I did a show with Walter Bosley, and I went on his channel. And I we were talking about California Mysteries. And we were talking, yeah, California Mysteries, and we spoke, we covered a lot of ground. But um, I had made a comment that Catalina was referred to as Limu by some natives. And um, I noticed a comment on Walter Bosley's page on that video by someone that was saying, like, I'll let Julian know she's wrong. Like, she's got this one wrong. And um, what I wanted to, so I contacted him and let him know, like, you need to go fix that comment and, like, you need to go fix it on Walter's page because I didn't get it wrong because, the, and then I cited my source. Now, what is my source? My source is called the Archivo General de los Indios, and it's got, like, 70,000 pages of all these ship logs, legal documents, and assorted statements by Spanish seafarers, land owners. Um, it's just a massive amount of information. 
Um, so according to his research, like according to his research, um, he was saying, no, it's not Lima, it's this other island. And so he could believe whatever he wants to believe. But what I was saying was, like, this is my source. This is, um, you know, it's from the 1500s. And it's a, it's <laughs> so much information. And instead of going through it, he was like, you know, you need to let this go. You're wrong. You need to knock this off. Like, you're wrong. And, and so for me, I'm like, no, like this, he can, you know, he started citing Wikipedia sources. He started citing, um, like national park narratives. And that's kind of like what's wrong with this research or uncovering anything is that, you know, of continuing to perpetuate stories. I mean, if, He's like, you know, it needs, I get his, his drive and determination that he's fueled by, he's like, no, Julie, this has to be accurate. It's about staying accurate, which is great. That's great. But, um, of just being able to cite sources when they're part of the system that's lied to us, I'm not for that. So, um, you know, this is an interesting article that actually Jim Watson wrote. And what he's saying is that he's talking about, um, you know, he's talking about, like, this is what it says. For those of you unfamiliar with him, you know, he's talking about Juan Cabrillo. Like, Cabrillo is probably best described as the Christopher Columbus of California, having maneuvered himself into the history books as supposedly the first European to explore the West Coast of North America. I say supposedly because there are many tales in Native American lore regarding the visits of bearded white men to California before Cabrillo's voyage. Even Cabrillo encountered such tales on his voyage to California. But this is all stuff another column that Jim says much of Cabrillo's life to say nothing of his death is shrouded in mystery no one is sure where or when he was born or who his parents were two factors that lead historians to believe he was not born to any semblance of nobility or wealth in fact for many years even his nationality was in doubt many historians originally believed he was Portuguese and not Spanish and it's not uncommon to find references to the Portuguese version of his name, Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo, in old history books. This assertion, however, has been basically debunked and explained as an error attributed to a single historian or perhaps even to a printing error. It has commonly been believed over the years that San Miguel Island off the Ventura County coast is where the individual indefatigable explorer met his doom and was forever interred. So everybody thinks it happened there. But a growing number of historians believe that he actually died at and is buried on, you guessed it, Catalina Island. Most of the confusion surrounding his internal whereabouts stems from the fact that the official log of his voyage to California in 1542 was lost. To add insult to ignorance, Early explorers had the nasty habit of applying more than one name to places they had visited, and there is some confusion as to which islands they were referring to, and their traipses around um, trapses, trapses? around California's Channel Islands. Most of what we know about Cabrillo's voyage comes from a document called the Archivo General de los Indios, a deliciously monstrous volume of forgotten lore consisting of 70,000 pages of ship logs, legal documents, and assorted statements by Spanish seafarers and landowners in the New World. According to the, archi the archivo, archivo, the Native Americans of what is now Catalina Island referred to their home as Limu, often transliterated as Pimu. The crew of Cabrillo's fleet referred to Limu variously as La I Las Isla, <laughs> La Isla Capitana, Isla de Juan Rodriguez, or by the official name that Cabrillo conferred upon the island, San Salvador. Confused yet? 
Things got bad for Juan Cabrillo on Christmas Eve, 1542, when a shore party ran into trouble with the locals while going ashore at Isla Capitana, although relations with those early Catalina Islanders had started out well, predictably perhaps. They eventually soured and Cabrillo's confidant and fellow seaman Francisco de Vargas at one point recalled all the time that the Armada was on the Isla Capitana. The Indians there never stopped fighting us. Remember, according to the Archivo, whenever either Vargas or fellow ship's officer Lazaro Cardenas referred to Isla Capitana, they were talking about Catalina, an island Cardenas described as the most important island discovered on the expedition and the headquarters for all the fleet. Heedless of his own safety, (laughs) Captain Cabrillo led a rescue party to shore. But as Cabrillo was de-boating on the island's rocky shore, he splintered a shin bone and possibly broke his arm. Although everyone made it back to the ship in one piece, Cabrillo was doomed by the gangrene that developed in his leg. On January 3rd... Oh, hey, Bernie. Hello. On January... Hope it's okay. I just popped out for a minute. For sure. On January 3rd, 1543, Cabrillo died and according to the archivo, archivo was buried on the island because he died there. Okay. Was buried. Okay. So this is January 3rd, 1543. Cabrillo died and according to the archivo was buried on the island because he died there. The island retained the name Capitana although some refer to it as La Isla de Juan Rodriguez. Sounds pretty straightforward to me, Catalina burial-wise. So where did anyone get it in their noggin that Cabrillo was buried on San Miguel Island, including a civic organization which put a monument there to the man in 1937 with the Portuguese spelling of his name? Most of this belief stems from a mysterious stone tablet that was found on San Miguel in the spring of 1901. A lone archaeologist was wandering that that windswept uh, aisle one day when he kicked what he thought was a stone metate and noticed some scribbling on one side. Those scribblings or etchings sort of appear to form the letters J-R-C, leading some to believe that this piece of rock may have been Cabrillo's headstone. Many historians and archaeologists, however, have called into question the authenticity of the tablet, especially since the phrase, follow me on Twitter, appears beneath the letters. Various expeditions to find Cabrillo's grave have been launched over the past 150 years to not only San Miguel and Catalina Islands, but just to be on the safe side to Santa Cruz Island and Santa Rosa Island as well. But alas, not a shred of evidence one way or the other, has ever been found. Okay, so literally, with all the mysteries that go on on Catalina, there's so much UFO activity around there, and there's literally a green door that appears, and and a, like a, that literally, there's all these different sightings of this, like they call it the green door, like this portal that opens up. And there's so much activity and so much ancient lores. There were giants that were found on the island. And um, so for me, I'm quoting this archivo, archi- archivo that consists of over 70,000 pages of ship logs, okay? Yeah, you're and- quoting original sources. Like, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And so that is what I'm saying. So for him to go and demand publicly that I'm wrong and then for me to point out, okay, for me to show where I'm getting my information from, you would think he would dive. If he's all about accuracy, dive into that information and then make your conclusion or make a presentation on it. But you cannot do not publicly come at me and and say that I'm wrong and then and to do like to do that when you're not and then give me wikipedia wikipedia pages to support what you're saying when this is literally like 
it predates like that? What toast is. It's like, I, I don't know who you're talking about, but whoever it is, they need to take it up with the people that wrote this book from the 1500s, not you. If, like, you know, like, it, it's just, uh, it sounds retarded. It's just, um, it's disappointing because this is kind of like, you're, you're arguing to perpetuate that. And so, uh, of just, you're perpetuating the light. That's like... You know, that's like busting out an encyclopedia or one of these school books that, you know, we, I mean, how much, if you've been doing, the, this is what's alarming. If you've been doing research and you're a hardcore researcher and you're all about accuracy, then you have come across many false, false misinformation that of information that has been written and taught that turned out to be false. So for you, like for that, not to, come across like for you not to be aware of that but now you're 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 getting to a point where you're re he's refusing to even look into this stuff this is a huge clue that could help him and so i look at it is like look you know what was my other post so i had told him um yeah look, look he's julia stop it right now you are wrong that's confirmation it? bias and cognitive dissonance simultaneously. It's like just because there's conflicting evidence of right. the thesis uh, that you're supporting and researching doesn't mean you're allowed to ta attack someone who has put this research up. It's There's information that is there that exists. You can't take it or leave it. It exists. Or like, you know, it's like uh, that's like. Me, like, oh, I talked to the, like, go talk to an elder. You know, if so, it's one thing if you're coming at me like, oh, this is an elder of Schumacher. They said this, this is what, but you know what I'm saying? Like, or, or go have this be part of your presentation and, and, and unfold it. But a wise thing, the way we're going to get out of this mess with, with what all the things we don't know and we've forgotten and is by everybody has a piece of the clue. Like everybody has information. I'm not going to know everything. And, you know, th there's things, there's clues I have. There's going to be clues you have and like working together collectively. So like, he's like, Julia, stop it right now. You are wrong. You got to get corrected. Get over it. He quotes the National Park Service, which is like, really? <laughs> the National Park Service. Are you kidding me? But he can believe that. Never lies. So what I wrote I've put, look, I want subscribers that get to the root, the truth, ones that can look past the lies and see beyond that. We have been fed so many lies. There is so much misinformation out. I want people that can use their mind, their heart and intuition to filter through it. I was giving you a chance to correct yourself because no matter what you believe, I posted my source to why I said that. So you should remove any statement saying it was incorrect. Instead, your ego got involved because he wants to be right. He wants the National Park to be right. He wants Wikipedia to be right because that's his conclusion. And you began saying your belief, your position, and you, you started quoting Wikipedia and the government narrative. Just know that I gave you an opportunity to do the right thing and I'm going to ban you. Because like that was another thing too. Here it's on Walter Bosley's channel, but it was a view. It was a subscriber of mine. So like anybody, you know what I mean? Like I don't need anybody following me or watching me and getting my insights and getting my information and tapped into my energy that's not going to do the work or that's not or or it's going to take some of it attack you every time you put out information that they don't like exactly because i want to solve some you know I'd, I'd like to solve some things and um you know um i'd really i'd like to work together that's why you know i came on here and I'm, I'm saying the whole thing about the totality spot that the Shawnee National Forest and Giant City Park and that because there's going to be information that you guys come across that I don't know or have but I'm, this type I'm of intrigued with the second city of the gods you found in Illinois yeah and I didn't look up how far away it is from those mounds either. What's it called? Like Cahokia um, Mounds. But this is beautiful. So 
And and do you see it looks so much older. They and it looks like it was under like a lot of water. And there are those, you know, those two rivers nearby. Yeah, we definitely gonna have to do a full episode on this place and research it more. Uh, sorry, I was just hopping on quick to, if you don't mind, you're also live on my channel and I will let you continue your presentation. Oh, all right. Well, I'll I mean, on in a little bit, if you're still going, it's just driving and. Oh, no, it's more, it's more of like a rant, essentially. Like it was just me saying like, look, if you're going to come at me telling me I'm incorrect on information that is literally from the 1500s and has thousand seventy thousand pages of logs and you're gonna you're gonna bypass that you're not gonna look into any of it and you're just literally gonna support what wikipedia and the national park service says like no not okay don't come at me with that i am not gonna support that i'm not i am not all love and light okay i may look like a dumb blonde but like i am not all love and light and that's not okay. And that's not going to fly. And please, like, do your research. Do your research. Like, that's just whack. Like, you post your sources and then someone trying to claim, like, oh, that's wrong. It's like, no, this is the source. Read it yourself. And just you matching energy. Like, matching energy, too. Like, he was demand. Like, he's publicly. Like, if this was. Okay, so let me say, like, if this was real life or maybe. Like where he goes in front of like in, in a stadium of people or an arena of people. And I, you know, I just did a big presentation with Walter Bosley and he stand, he gets on stage and is like, Julia is incorrect in front of the whole crowd and is like making this big thing. And it's like, what? Like the, the things that would happen because of doing that, but like how ignorant it is and ballsy. It's ballsy. And it's your, you know, it's, it, but to demand that and then for it to be turned upon that person and be like, okay, actually, no, you're wrong. Now you need to publicly say you are incorrect because look, I've got all these, <laughs> these logs from all these captains that say, you know, all these accounts that says otherwise. And it's like, no, I refuse. And, and, you know, how that would transpire in ancient times. But like to to publicly do that and demand that and then refuse to do what you were demanding me to do. Uh-uh. So I just wanted to uh, I wanted to cover that a little bit and I wanted to set the tone of like, look, you don't have to agree with everything I'm saying, right? You don't have to. I mean, you should, but you don't have to. No, but for real, you really don't. And um, but to challenge something that I deeply researched. And then refuse to do that research. It's like, okay, you could still, you know, maybe you're not supposed to know about that. You know, this is like, and that's another thing is some of the most valuable information to humanity is highly guarded. It is not for everyone. Like alchemical formulas, treasure maps. So Matt, you know, it's like, literally, it's like some of these things of like citing sources. There are some things that intuitively come or that, that, that happen that are so magical, but you can't prove. And so it's like, it, it's almost like finding a treasure and them saying, well, you know, where's the sources on that? You know what I mean? Or like, oh, I made this amazing formula and it's this ancient alchemical formula and them being like, well, you know, oh, you made it. It is amazing, but I can't find anywhere that cites that they, that they used it then or that this is the exact formula. So I'm going to disregard all of it. Like, No. Lots of like the biggest truths and like scientific breakthroughs are just they're they're fought against. People refuse to accept the reality, and it's because it's a change and it's a shift in their own paradigm. And it's not your fault that reality doesn't necessarily sit with what they want to believe. Right. And another thing I'm going to bring up is uh, I recently did a show with Dennis Glamby. He did an amazing presentation, amazing presentation on um, Karahan Tepe. Oh, but everybody's like, there's been a lot of people to be like, listen, Julia, don't let this person steal your energy. They're not. Like, 
I'm saying this aggressively and passionately. You're, you're mistaking. I'm literally, in, I'm sticking up for myself. I'm literally defend, like I'm defending my position. I'm defending, I'm matching my beliefs, like, and I'm being passionate. And when I'm passionate and firm, doesn't mean I'm mad. Like, did it make me happy and joyful? No, but I know how to transmute energy and redirect it. And exactly. it's like, you it's taking it, it's fuel. It's fuel of like me being like, no. And I, you know what? Get used to it too, because I go on rants and I'm passionate and it's going to sound like I'm pissed off, but there's a fire that I have within me. So don't think, you know what I mean? Like, so when people are like, whoa, dude, calm down, like, like, forget about it. And it's like, what? No, like it, you're totally misreading this in a whole nother, in a whole nother right. <laughs> energy. You get to energize you into making a whole video and that it's your creative, right. right? Like you did something good with it. Right. Exactly. So, but back to the, um, Dennis Glamby thing is, I'm, um, no. Dennis. Oh, are you all right? Oh, no, that the, was, that was Amber. Oh, okay. Hey Hi. girl. Hi. <laughs> Happy total solar eclipse. <laughs> right? Slept through that one today. Oh, I know. Hi, you're we're amazing. In, we're in Canada. We couldn't see it anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but on to the um on to the Dennis Glamby thing. So he did this amazing presentation on Carhan Tepe. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. And he spoke about this site. I thought it was brilliant. And he's never been to this site. And um, I had gotten, a, 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 there was a few comments about it. And, you know, it seemed like they were like, look, you know, there were some inaccuracies. Over, like, clearly you guys haven't been there. Which was interesting because it was like, um, dude, if you watch the full show, I'm constantly, you know, I'm constantly bringing up that I want to raise funds to get him to go to the site, to go to Karahan Tepe. So they clearly didn't watch the whole thing. But, you know, it's like, well, there's inaccuracy. Okay, well, it was he wrong. But that still doesn't change the fact of what he felt the site was used for. And I wanted to make this disclaimer and proclaim, you got it. I want people to understand I'm somebody who has done amazing things from my living room without seeing like without seeing an ancient relic, without going to an ancient site and had profound information on those items and proved it. So I'm somebody I that, you know, that feels like you don't have to go to some of these sites to get the knowledge on the sites. So, um, well, you know, you whether to go there physically, Right. It's you. You're still right. traveling there, but and and putting energy into it and but that, researching it through it. But you don't have to physically be there to get it. But that there's going to be people, especially these next few years, like there's going to be people that are destitute, like in a closet in India, like with bar barely any Internet connection that are going to have profound insights and discoveries and knowledge. There's people that are going to have pieces to puzzles and amazing thesis and amazing inf supportive information of things, you know, we never thought of that. They never been to this site. They're going to have, inf like, they're going to have information. It doesn't matter if they've gone there. Like it, it's, well, I'm not saying Dennis is completely right. I thought it was brilliant. I love that idea, but the it's fact that he came up with it, saw or what he researched and found right it's it's what he was able to find of it and he puts it forward it's awesome work right so that's the thing is i'm open i'm, I'm somebody that's like i'm open so of so, course so so it's not like i'm doing bad research by allowing somebody to do a presentation because they haven't like i'm not going to hear them out because they haven't been to the site not only that but it was brilliant whether you've gone to the site or haven't gone to the site he his 3D presentation of indicating that of how he showed what he felt from his heart, what it was used for. I haven't I haven't heard anybody make those kinds of uh, you know um, discoveries or like like those those because creatively of being able to 
we're going to have to use our imagination sometimes of like, well, was it this? Was it that? You know, because we don't know. I mean, how many people you go around, you ask thousands of people what the pyramids were used for, like how many of them would be right? Right. Well, you're going to get a thousand different answers pretty much or 500 at least. And for anyone that's like doubting what Julia just said regarding like being getting accessing information remotely and being verified and vindicated by that information. Well, if you've never heard of Edgar Casey, he is the prime example, the sleeping prophet of how retrieving the information from the ether, from like, you know, the environment from the Akashic records, whatever you want to call it. But he has proven like time and time again, and his prophecies are still coming true of stuff that he was able to pull out with his mind. Even just inventors, like that's why I really vibed with going on your show on the Real Science Show was talking to these guys of that are building these inventions, building these coils. And, and I find it fascinating how they get their insights, like through dreams or visions. And that's, what's also so interesting. And that I loved about Verbelli's information was John Searle. It came to him in a dream and how, and then hearing about the dream and how he decoded that, which also supports what I'm also saying. There'll be sometimes major clues that are huge disclosures, but it's how you decode that information. You know, so a lot of the times the information is there. It's like pattern recognition or like seeing past certain things, you know, so to, to see past all the clues sometimes and just be like, no, I'm, I'm going to stick to Wikipedia and the National Park Service. Like, what? <laughs> Okay, whatever uh, the White House says, that, that's what the truth is. Okay. Right, right. Like, you guys, I'm, I'm sorry. I need to listen to my medical professional all the time because they know what's best. And so it's a dangerous, uh, it is a dangerous um, area. But yeah, there. I mean, just the things that monks have done by meditating using their mind and just I'm all for people unlocking that within them like that you have powers you can't even believe and that's the problem is you don't want to believe you have it and you block yourself from utilizing it or working towards it or you don't get instant gratification so you just stop exactly right the power of projection and the law of attraction if you do not believe or if you don't know if you refuse to know and accept the truth that you have the powers within you then of course they're never going to manifest because in your reality you have accepted that they don't exist thus you're blocking them and preventing them from happening yeah, absolutely. And wait, I don't, your viewers didn't see this part. So I'll do like an overview a little bit of what I found interesting is in, in that note, I didn't hear anybody talking about this. That, so that's why I felt compelled to just bring this up, especially with like the kind of crowd we vibe with. Like, I feel like we all are like into ancient sites and uncovering like things deep within the earth and trying to figure out things about them. And so where the path of totality is like where the two paths of the eclipses cross is like almost 9,000 square miles. So from the 2017 and the, and then today's 2024, like eclipse. So X marks the spot. So, which is in Cedar Lake in Jackson County, Illinois. And the closest town is Maconda, which has got like 500 people. And what I found significant is what surrounds Maconda. So here's Maconda right here. And then let me zoom out a little bit. And then if you see, you got Giant City State Park right here. And then you have Shawnee National Forest right here. And so, and what's interesting too, in the early 20th century, this town, Maconda, used the slogan, Star of Egypt. So I was like, what? But, so I found this to be really significant. So I wanted to look more in Gi into Giant City State Park and Shawnee National Forest, which is Illinois' only national forest. So in 
Shawnee is uh, Garden of the Gods, which is, of course, different than Colorado Garden of the Gods. Right? Like two different Garden of the Gods now. Yeah, I really do want to go there, though. Right? Me too. And so this other uh, Vimaconda in this other national forest park, Illinois' only national park, is this other city of the gods, or Garden of the Gods. Yeah, Garden of the Gods is in Shawnee National Forest. And then in um, over in Giant City giant city park look at this see this wall right like anywhere in europe that would be recognized as ancient megalithic like carving tunnels worked on you name it right but oh it's in america so no that's natural (laughs) right and it goes against like i guess you know when they said columbus discovered this place like it goes against the narrative right and anyone in like that's been following our research or in this community, it's like pretty much a given that if it's called a national park or badlands, that there's probably something pre-cataclysm hidden in it. Absolutely. So that's why I was like, listen, I want to see if, what you guys come up with, but this right here was really interesting. This is Garden of the Gods. I'll be back shortly. I'm just driving. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to give a recap to Bernie's viewers. Garden of the Gods. And then this is Observation Point Trail. And it looks out over these sculpted rocks. That kind of reminds me of, like, things you see in Sedona right there. But it looks older or just maybe because of more water damage. There is a couple rivers. Um, if you like backcountry hiking and camping, look into the 160 mile river to river trail. Hmm. And so there was this uh, ancient Indian rock, like on the trail. They said it's been dismantled and that these are the remnants of it. And this person that did the trail hike said, along this hike, I came across the crumbled remains of an ancient stone wall built by prehistoric Indians about 1,500 years ago. The wall was almost 150 feet long and was strategically located to block the only accessible route to the top of the bluff where the Indian tribe lived. If it wasn't for the interpretive sign, I would have thought this was just another random pile of mother's nature, Mother Nature stones. And then this place, um, other things to do near Garden of the Gods. So this cave in Rock State Park, it's a huge 55-foot wide limestone cave that was formed thousands of years ago. This landmark on the Ohio River became Illinois' first state park. Look at this. And then I guess, yeah, Jesse James went there. Look at that guy. (laughs) Look at the size of that. And then this is looking at the Ohio River from inside the cave in rock. Yeah, they filmed How the West Was Won, Davy Crockett, and the River Pirates. But, so that is that. And I just wanted, oh yeah, this Iron Furnace. It's, oh, it's a restored example of the Iron Furnace. Hmm. So, here it is on a map one more time. Here's Maconda. There's Giant City State Park. And then Shawnee is over here. All right. I was on... I was on a strong one. <laughs> I was on. I was coming in hot today. You guys, it's a total solar eclipse in Aries. 
All right. And it's also like in alignment with Chiron. Chiron is the wounded healer. Okay. So I think some of my wounds are, uh, I think I'm healing some of my wounds by being like, no, you know what? You know, I'm not going to just always people please and just, uh, you know, all, or not, it's not that I people believe of like avoiding confrontation or like speaking up for myself that's going to ruffle some feathers or whatever. Like, no, no, like not to, you know, say how you feel and that it ignited like passion inside me. But I hope some, you know, I hope I reached somebody with something tonight with my passion. And um, thank you for being here. And yeah, you guys have a good night. I will see you next time. Beautiful till it all burns out. Like falling stars, the miracles dancing up the ground. And we'll ride with you to feel it strike to deep time. We'll ride with you. Yeah. Let's say that life is beautiful